Hey guys, welcome back to Clockwise Crypto. Hope you guys are moving forward in everything that you do. Let's dive right into it here. Taking a look at this article, Arthur Hayes says TradeFi could completely destroy Bitcoin with SPY ETF, and here's why. Diving into this article here really quick, BitMEX founder Arthur Hayes says traditional finance TradeFi world could gain dangerous levels of power over Bitcoin if they manage to control SPY BTC exchange traded funds ETFs. In a new essay, the crypto veteran, if you guys know Arthur Hayes, uh, has been around a long time, um, almost, you know, is uh, almost as well known as CZ with Binance. Uh, Arthur Hayes has been around forever and, uh, you know, with BitMEX. And so he's been in the space a while. So, you know, I would consider what he says being somewhat credible as he's been around the block for, for a minute. So uh, Hayes says that for Bitcoin to survive, it's coins must move around enough to generate rewards for miners thus keeping the network secure and decentralized he has a point with block rewards gradually dropping until they hit zero in the year 2140 hayes notes miners will only receive bitcoin income via fees if the network is used for transactions however if institutions are simply hoarding most of the coins and cold stores to back their etfs he says there won't be enough BTC movement to generate fees and secure the blockchain. BlackRock, the world's largest trade fi asset manager, is in asset accumulation game. They vacuum up assets, store them in a metaphorical vault, issue a tradable security, and charge a management fee for their hard work. They don't use things they hold on behalf of their clients, which presents a problem for Bitcoin if we take an extreme view of a possible future. Imagine a future where the largest Western Chinese asset managers hold all the Bitcoin circulation. This happens organically as people confuse a financial asset with the store of value because their confusion and laziness. People purchase Bitcoin ETF derivatives rather than buying and holding Bitcoin in self custody wallets. So. Uh, here at the end of this article, he's saying that now that a handful of firms hold all Bitcoin and no actual use for the Bitcoin blockchain, the coins never move again. The result, miners turn off their machines. They can no longer pay for the energy required to run them by Bitcoin. Bitcoin was 43,902 at the time of that writing. So definitely paints a picture of what uh, could potentially happen if you know everyone's bullish on this bitcoin etf oh bitcoin's gonna move to the etf yeah and, you know we've been hearing about etf for like at least for me i've been hearing it for about six years almost seven years now uh consistently and um i never really thought about that like the goal for you know these assets these big funds buying the bitcoin they're not using it they're gonna buy and hold it right and so the miners essentially don't necessarily don't make any money anymore because there's no movement on the blockchain anymore to justify the mining and so the miners stop mining bitcoin then what happens poof bitcoin so i that's definitely an interesting take um and i def and for for me i just don't think that once you have big asset managers and you know big conglomerates invested in bitcoin like that I don't necessarily think they're going to allow it to fail because now they're directly vested and 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 you know really have a long term view of the asset and want it to succeed as well. So, that, but still, definitely a good take. Uh, definitely wanted to highlight that. Looking at this other article, U.S. SEC admits to making inaccurate statements in crypto fraud case after judge issues warning. So the SEC has copped to making inaccurate statement in an ongoing crypto fraud case after being questioned by the judge. SEC alleges the company and its founders operated fraudulent scheme by selling fake node licenses to investors that the company promised would generate crypto assets via mining. SEC obtained temporary restraining order to freeze uh, an asset freeze in part by arguing the debt box and its founders were funneling investors funds into luxury purchases and accounts overseas. The defendants filed a motion to dissolve temporary restraining order because Right here, it looks like uh, it's saying Michael Welsh, the SEC lead trial counsel, claimed 
During the hearing that defendants had closed around 33 bank accounts in 48 hours leading up to the court date, the regulator, however, acknowledged that Wells' number was derived from a miscommunication. The SEC explains only 24 bank accounts were closed and none were shuttering and were shuttered the month of the hearing. <laughs> the SEC does note that the balance uh, of several bank accounts owned by certain defendants subsequently decreased in July but were not closed. So it's just like, you know, you're trying to make your case and you're just pulling and you're pulling from everywhere and you just hope you just hope they don't say anything about it. You know, you're shooting. Oh, it was this number. So now they're looking a little silly. Uh, among other measures, the enforcement director assigns senior attorneys from the commissioner Denver regional office to supervise this matter going forward and uh you know sec however argues that the errors weren't severe enough to merit sanctions um so uh really interesting to see that um sec has really been a thorn in crypto's side versus trying to help with adoption and pushing this technology forward specifically for the united states i would say um we have not seen really um uh, I would say in the United States uh, and Canada um, and a couple other countries, we haven't seen really big moves in a few countries when it comes to pushing this tech and utilizing the tech. Then you have countries like a couple countries in South, uh, South America who are betting it all on the tech. Right. So um, really interesting to see how, you know, I would guess you want to look at the why. Why would governments not want to adopt this tech that could benefit everyone not just the governments but the people within these countries like why why wouldn't they want to push mass adoption so that's something that i would definitely uh want to really take a look at you know because uh, really once you uncover that why why is there such a hold up because they're saying it's to protect investors but really you're keeping it's 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 look like you're keeping people where they are and you don't want them to take higher uh positions and 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 higher levels of wealth and potentially financial sovereignty to uh you know really set themselves up for their family in the future so we'll uh we'll keep a keep an eye on the sec what's going on uh but i do think it's a shame that uh you we do not see more countries taking advantage of this technology Veteran Trader here. One last article here. I wanted to make sure we highlight this. Veteran Trader Peter Brandt withdraws bearish outlook on Ethereum. Says Solana can continue to trend higher. Um, here, you know, there was a ton of uncertainty. I actually like this chart. It's pretty clean. I don't agree with this top trend line, but uh, overall, this chart is pretty clean. Uh, going here, you guys remember what I said the other day about low time frames? Uh, this, didn't, this trader here is not showing you a low time frame chart. So big kudos to Peter Brandt. Uh, on uh, with trading view uh, publishing this chart and staying on the higher time frames guys you remember what i said do not do not follow these traders that are showing you lower time frame on crypto assets there's no scenario where you would need to see a lower time frame chart on a long-term crypto asset prediction even it's too much movement guys there's too much movement there's too much volatility in crypto for you to be looking at a 10 minute 5 minute 15 minute even sometimes an hour chart okay there's just no reason for it <laughs> so love that this chart is the daily time frame uh this time this writing here he's saying that uh ethereum was 20 uh 26 or no 2316 dollars and um really like what i'm seeing here when it comes to uh just uh just the cleanness of the chart like i really think that it's pretty clean and looking here i'm trying to see what his overall um bias is uh taking here he's saying that saying he's no longer expecting the leading altcoin ethereum to go on a big move to the downside last week brant said on twitter or x that he was shorting ethereum predicting eth could tumble to as low as 650 dollars in an update, the veteran trader said that circumstances have changed. He's no longer bearish on top of altcoin. ETH has managed to move above the resistance, ascending a uh, triangle pattern, which we see that break out there. Strong opinions, weekly held. When circumstances change, my opinions change. Fair statement. Love that. When circumstances change, my opinions change. Um, that's pretty much 
every seasoned technical trader out there that looks at the markets, you take the information that's gathered and you react and respond to the market conditions. So kudos to uh, Peter. I definitely will be giving him a follow. Uh, fundamentally, I agree with what he's saying. Looking at the high time frame charts, that's one indicator that you know this guy really trades. The time frame you're looking at, uh, a lot of the new traders are looking at low time frames. It doesn't make sense. Um, Solana, he uh, also highlights Solana here saying, um, while Altcoin already met this upside target, it is still within the realm possibility for the coin to continue to go up. So uh, Solana's chilling there and, um, you know, broke out. You see a little breakout there. Uh, broke out and from that breakout is continuing to make new highs so i've been you've been hearing solana's name around everywhere that's pretty much been everywhere for me um i'm not necessarily on the solana train even though i do think solana will hit a thousand dollars um so i may pick up a bag of solana just to ride that wave um long term i'm not sure the tech i'm not sure from a price action play i do think that it is a good play to ride up to a thousand dollars anything from 750 to a thousand i think uh is a good alternative uh price point for uh for solana so we'll see how that goes taking a look at dj win so uh this crypto you know pretty much if you look at crypto betting and and you know market size for that is about 250 million in a growing share of 93 billion in the iGaming industry so there's no de denying that the world of gaming is crazy and these numbers can be confirmed in that you know there's potential and that there is market share to be gathered so today we're going to talk about one of the brightest players in this market D Gen win and if you're in crypto you have a huge chance uh you know because you're already a player so you're already in you're already in crypto you're already you know pretty much a part of the movement so here you can use the fact that a majority of stock exchange users are already you know pretty much in the in you know into taking risk so the same futures trading with high leverage is the same you know for the for the game and you know pretty much has the same emotions here so every day the exchanges liquidate hundreds of millions of dollars worth of positions. Yeah, we continue to believe that this is a failed analysis. And so you can actually take a look at that in, in different places. But diving into this here, um, you know, real world athletes, players, crypto influencers as brand ambassadors. So you can see they have their backing. They've made their mark when it comes to, you know, uh, getting real people behind this project. And so a lot of people are saying this could be the next roll bit. Um, so, uh, definitely take your, take a look at it. You can look at their allocation and what they're doing with the token. So right now they are, uh, in private sale. Um, from my understanding, I think they are about 70%. Yep. About 70% sold. So pretty much if, if you get to about 70% sold, you know, this is going to sell out. It's just a matter of when, uh, look at their token allocations, private sale, liquidity, mar uh, marketing partnerships, 18%. So pretty heavy there with getting the word out treasury at 10% gaming and rewards at 20% huge. Um, and, and right now, you know, token sales going on. So you can see what's going on, the entry price and what to expect. Why DJ and win uh, new and exclusive Provable fair games, web two and web three account signups, with rapid withdrawals, daily bonuses on over 3,000 games, non custodial control, your own assets, no KYC requirements at this time. Athletes and influencer backed, network effects and listing other tokens, and DGW airdrop. So big things happen in there. Taking a look at their Twitter, Twitter's been around for uh, just about a year, a little bit over a year now. Uh, coming that we're in the end of December and uh, you know the D uh, DGW presale is live right now uh, they are very active on Twitter um, X and 200 IQ movements DM for credit uh, taking a look here at their engagement I love what I see here uh, really the fact that you know despite the uncertainty in the market conditions they are continuing to be active continuing to post continuing to engage and that's what you want to see in a project to see what they are doing when every everything's not booming are they still out there are they still going to continue to uh you know you know promote and 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 really add value to the marketplace so love what i'm seeing there and uh really one one, one way you can earn money uh with 
this project without you know betting or playing you can make money even without you know doing any of that and one of the ways is by a token and referral system so they have a referral system where you can get a percentage not only from the referred users but also those who will be referred by them so almost building that tree and that network um you know building that almost that funnel system you have first level 13 percent second level eight percent third level four percent fourth level three percent fifth level two percent so uh definitely some value there you know for those that you know you just want to share and you don't necessarily want to play but you want to share and you can do that and still earn rewards so a uh, very very cool thing so um one thing that you really want to pay attention to is the holdout token and you can pretty much make money on the tokens without playing so that's big you can make money on tokens without playing just by sharing it you can make money so that's huge uh, a lot of people don't want to play you know a lot of people just want to tell people about it and keep it moving you can do that with dgen win uh only 1.3 million left in the pre-sale so it's time to get in the pre-sale guys like i said you see that they're, they're about 70 percent sold like i said it's just a matter of time it's not about if it's going to sell out. It's just a matter of when. Um, only um, by registering at the link, you can get extra bonuses and passive from your purchases. Looking to buy a small percentage at, after the end of pre-sale will fix the percentage on uh, on a certain amount. And the rest, plan to keep, risk are paramount. So definitely wanted to uh, share that with you guys and really provide you that avenue. You can actually take a look at them. 6,000 people member or six thousand members on telegram so uh it's coming uh they're building a firm foundation and i like that you know to be honest with you that they're providing an opportunity for people that don't want to play if you don't want to play that's cool if you just want to tell someone about it that's even better <laughs> so uh you know no risk to that and then people that want to play play and you still can get some type of affiliate or referral bonus for that so dj win good shout out here and definitely wanted you guys to take a look links will be in the description for you guys to pay attention to and like i said uh you know six thousand people on telegram right now okay so tune in links will be in the description pay attention to that going into the charts here uh looking here at bitcoin um definitely wanted to highlight this and uh this is something that you know we've been waiting for uh we were waiting for that pullback i was waiting for a pullback a lot of people were waiting for a pullback and uh for me um we'll see where we're gonna go uh this the movements that i'm seeing right now um very much favor the movements that we saw back in 2017 where everything was pretty much in limbo and then like right after christmas it shot up right after christmas shot up going into the new year and then pretty much fell off a cliff for the rest of the year um and i was talking to one of my buddies about it and i uh, was saying you know what do you you know what are your analysis aligning with like what are you thinking and, and we talked about it and i was like you know what that is exactly what happened 2017 going into 18 it was you know you had ripple go from two cents to two dollars you guys know my story with that still scars me to the day <laughs> but uh we saw that and then from there i think bitcoin hit it might have been like january it might have been about Jan uh, january february uh no later than march it hit twenty thousand. And then pull back from twenty thousand to about six, five to six thousand. I'm gonna say, maybe three. I don't remember. It pulled back significantly, um, and really reached that bottom, uh, that bottom piece. And um, we'll see where we look at here. I am wanting to see Bitcoin go to this red trend line. That's what I'm waiting for. You guys have heard it from me. You guys know, you know what I've been waiting for. I want to whether it's up. I don't care where it's at, though. If it's up here at 40, if it's down here at, at 30, if it breaks through, I want to see how I react to this trend line, however long it takes. That is the weekly time frame. Um, but even the daily, it's just, you know, this trend line is so valid. That it's even respected on the daily. So um, taking a look at the weekly here and just paying attention. 
and and making sure that we are prepared uh, as we continue to really navigate through these market uh, conditions and what's going on. I know from a from a U.S. standpoint, I think there's going to be uh, interest rate uh, drops, drops of interest rates. So how is that going to impact the market? Um, I think that people are, you know, going to increase buying real estate there in the U.S. And um, we'll see how that, you know, what turns that that takes. So uh, that's my analysis on Bitcoin. I w- I'm, I'm still holding firm with me wanting to see a pullback to our red trend line, wherever that may be. Like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be in four weeks. Boom, boom, boom. It doesn't necessarily have, have to be, you know, in five weeks but you know for me i want to see where we're at if that means i have to extend i have to extend but i want to see us you know this very valid trend line here i want to see how it gets respected going to ethereum same thing i put the same red trend line there i want to see how we react when we reach that point now we did just hear um peter peter brandt say he doesn't think that there's going to be a massive drop um that'll be confirmed with respect to the trend line here if it breaks or bounces will be the the end all be all with what's going to happen so uh until then dollar cost average continue to funnel in uh but also be very uh, mindful of this trend line here and uh that's what we're going to be waiting for guys so guys i hope you guys got some value out of this video this was a long one keep moving forward in everything that you do we'll see you soon